related, and they teamed up with TNDC. And uh, again, it's 476 market rate units, 177 affordable. And that one right now, we're still negotiating with them on the deal. We have what's called an exclusive negotiating agreement, which means that we have nine months to, to cut a deal with them and actually get, get the land under contract. And we're very close to having it under contract with them. And so most likely, they're going to close on the land around the end of the year. Um, if you go to the next one, block six. Um, that one is Golub and Mercy. Golub is the is the uh, market rate builder, and then Mercy is the affordable builder. Uh, you can see the unit counts there: 409 market rate, 155 affordable. Uh, that's the one when you go out there and you drive by, you can see they're underway. And uh, you know they're they're saying that they're gonna that they're gonna be complete this year. Um, I just happened to, to talk to the developer the other day, and I guess they're they're having a lot of problems getting glass out of China. So you don't, you guys drive down there and you look at those buildings and you see that there's two of them there that don't have any glass on them. They're both having the same problems. So. Um, next one over, block two. Uh, that one uh, is, is planned for uh, a ways off. Um, block one, that one actually is not a Caltrans parcel. That's owned by by the re former redevelopment agency. Uh, but we have been working with a builder there called Titian Spire. And uh, again, we're working with them to get that under contract. We also have an, an exclusive agreement with them for nine months to try to, to, try to hammer out a deal. Um, going up, going further north, um, block four is one that's going to be a ways off because of the, the uh, train box that's going to be coming through there. So we can't build on that one yet. Block 5, um, that one is also a company called Gola, and they're doing a, an office building on that one, about 700,000 feet in total. That one, again, we're close to having an agreement. They're saying that they're going to, that they're going to close on it this year, and then um, they'll probably start next year sometime. Um, if you see parcel T at the, at the top, I'm sure you guys have all heard about that that project. That's a Salesforce tower. Uh, that's a real exciting one, about 1.4 million square feet, and uh, it's going to be almost as high as the Empire State Building. So it'll be the tallest building in in San Francisco. Um, going over to the west, uh, Parcel F. That's another one that we're working on. Not really sure what we're going to do there. We think it might be office, but that one's a ways off. Um, Going to the going to the parks. There's really three main parks that we're responsible for that we're going to be constructing. And uh, if you look at the at the upper left hand corner, it says under ramp park. And so um, what we have there is we have about a two and a half acre park that um, is going to be built underneath that ramp. And um, just a second, let me pull out what's going to be in there. Um, right now with this park, we're working on the plans, and so we're hoping that we're going to be able to start it sometime around 2017, right in there, and be done by 2018. And within that park, we have planned a beer garden, uh, we've got a long uh, LED wall, we've got bike paths, we have what's called a rain garden, which really is a, what it is, it's a biofiltration system where all the rainwater goes through this garden, gets filtered out before it goes into the storm systems. And then within that filtration area, we have a boardwalk where people can, can walk through there and be kind of different. Um, we also have bike paths, um, basketball courts, sport courts. So there's gonna be a lot of uh, cool things to do in that park. Soccer field. Pardon me? A soccer field. No, but we have a sport court that, that really serve. it can be a small soccer field, but not a full soccer field. They just didn't have enough room in that. What block is that in again? What that is, is that? 
That is right here. See What's the name of the street? Area? Through here. What's the name of the street? Um, well, it's under that ramp. Yeah, we've got one site in Mission Bay that's underneath the freeway, so it's a tough place for grass to grow that we've looked at as being a possible um, skate park. We have it. It's going to be one of the later ones to develop. Uh, the Public Utilities Commission is looking at possibly using that when they do a large infrastructure improvement to take out their boring machine, so that'll be several years in the future, but that was identified as part of the plan as potential uh, skateboard park. Regarding the terminal itself, uh, you know, our offices are directly involved with that. There's a joint powers agency that oversees that. Um, you know, but what, what I know about it now, um, as you all know, I mean, it's one block wide by four blocks long. It's going to be five stories. Uh, they're scheduled to be complete with it by the end of 2017. I was at a meeting the other day that said they were on schedule. So they think they're going to hit that date. Are you just referring to the terminal itself or all the terminal? Terminals? Just the terminal just itself, the terminal. not any of the build out around the terminal. Right. Right. I didn't have one question. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 that L that you said for the train, is that the one that's going by Caltrain or is that the one that's going to Bakersfield? Which... Well, it's planned for both. It is. Yeah, it's planned for both along with bus. So, so the one that's going to Caltrain is going to be an extension that's going to be that first leg in the... Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about the extension from the, from Caltrain. I thought you were talking about the terminal itself. Yeah, but I know what I mean is that terminal right there is going to go, the, the tunnel's going to go to Caltrain or it's going where? The, ho 
scope is it's going to be both Caltrain as well as high speed rail. So the Caltrain to get down to as, uh, San, uh, San Jose and then also to connect with the high speed rail. If the that's first leg that's up. going to Bakersfield, right? right. To, it's to LA. Yeah, eventually to LA. So that's where it's going. See, I thought it was going to be a Caltrain. Well, the idea is the idea is you know Caltrain terminates at Fourth and King would be to do an underground tunnel to connect to this um, this terminal. Yeah, and so the city planning is right now undertaking a that was always part of the Transbay project was to do this connection. Um, the planning is looking at possibly taking down the feasibility of taking down 280 from Mariposa up to Sixth Street undergrounding the train at that level um, and then turning it basically making a new Octavia uh, Plaza from that uh, Mariposa into the city <coughs> and having all the trains go underground at that point. That's a big chunk a big of chunk. To away. You're going to do that after the time of the cars come out, right? <laughs> Not before the car comes to drive in the city of Part of this will be doing studies and seeing what it does to traffic and talking to Cal, uh, Caltrans to see their interest level and such. Right. Um, in the meantime, though, is looking at how do you get the train, even if the freeway is there, how do you get the train underground and connecting? The city's going to look so different in that area. I know. It's already, if you haven't been out to Mission Bay recently or even Trans Bay, it's kind of fun to go out there um, with I'm just I've been through there like two, three times a day, so yeah. it's like I see all parts so you of the see, city. Yeah. There's only a couple So many it's like it's cleaning up. The tender one looks like it's cleaned up a little bit. Oops, we're in the tender one. I gotta be careful what I say, but um, the rest of the city looks the same. They're starting, we're starting down in uh, southeast over at Hunters Point Shipyard is starting to see some change down there as well. That does look a little different down there. Does he want to get a big Yeah. I can't wait to see how this one's all. Kind of fun. I think it's gonna be cool. Okay, are there any yeah, more questions for the uh, Presenter, that's what we're here for. Uh, oh, not commentary. Michael. So, is there any questions or um, about the transfer? Susan. Yeah. And how flexible are you on? Uh, one thing is there's been great changes with offices and office buildings and what constitutes an office. And there's going to. I mean, I just have a feeling that uh, you know a lot of these office buildings, you know, might be uh, empty dovecots. It, unless there's some way of uh, being able to repurpose them. I mean, with, okay, with the fact that, you know, uh, the micronization of printers and office gear and the fact that, you know, people can have uh, meeting spaces and conference spaces, but the actual physical uh, need that we had 30, 40 years ago for so much space for our equipment is shrinking Continuously. Right. Yeah, I read the other day that like the average office per employee has gone down from 200 feet to 100 feet. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you know, as far as as our project here, you know, we really just have the one office building that we're dealing with on Block Five. Uh huh. That one's about 700,000 feet. You know, from talking to the developer, they seem to think that there's enough demand, especially on the tech side. Uh, mm -hmm. To be able to fill that building, the the uh, parcel T sales for us is almost all pre-leased. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, there's probably just been such a a lack of supply in mm -hmm. San Francisco that a lot of pent-up demand. You know, even with the the per employee needs going down, it's the only thing I can think of. We've been through the lofts. I mean, we I mean, we have been through a lot of uh, fashion in work live space right. uh, considerations so you know I mean I'm just saying that if things can be repurposed some, you know if it's I mean uh, that, that might help a lot of uh, take the burden of housing off of yeah. well I know in Mission Bay we push really hard to make sure that they design these buildings to be as flexible as possible because we've got the opportunity of being office or biotech, kind of the lab. Mm -hmm. But if you don't design the building correctly, it's very hard to retrofit it for lab space. Yeah. Um, you need height, different heights, different equipment abilities. So we're constantly trying to push them, even though it's a few dollars up front. 
mm -hmm. to um, design these so that it can go either way and that allows more flexibility with the market. We have one building which didn't do that and they had a very difficult time leasing because oh. they hit right when the market crashed for office. Mm -hmm. And if they had it purposed so that it could be used for biotech, they would have been able to lease it up quicker. So I know from my side, we're always encouraging folks not to think about the next five years but put a little bit more money into the buildings to allow them to be as flexible as possible, recognizing we want something that will work for 50, 100 years out in the future. Well, the killer thing about the live work lots was they were exempted from paying school tax. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, we got a lot, you know, we're getting more kids. Right. So yeah. that's sort of like a bad feeling all around. Mm -hmm. Okay, any last question? Does anybody have one? Question about this. The agenda finished with this. Okay. Can't hear you, Margaret. No, there's no question. So, so we need to move on. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. As I was gonna say, if you want to have someone talk, uh, come in and talk about the city's affordable housing program, uh, just give me a ring. Can we get your contact on the road? Today. We don't capture those are different issues. They have nothing to do with what we're doing in this, this group. Just that, that would be a different issue. Okay. Totally different. Okay, the next item is you could take a step out in the hallway, please. Take it out into the hallway. Oh, so we're still on the meeting. Uh, uh, next uh, presenter is the uh, Tenderline Pride in the Park 2015. Could you come up to the center here? And, uh, Smiley face, but... Okay, let me just... I took my head off. Okay, well, all right. Well, okay, I'm going to center you and... Okay, that's perfect. Okay. My name is Gerald Banks, but most people in the neighborhood know me as Aja Monet. Um, I try to be real active in the community. Um, I love living in the, in the Tenderloin area because it's a great up-and-coming uh, neighborhood, I think. It's getting better. And um, I, I think a couple of years ago, I worked on a uh, project with the Vicki Marlene's uh, add-on name, which was a transgender. And I didn't know Vicki, but I just thought it would be a great thing to do um, to make sure that the uh, LGBT history is preserved um, in the neighborhood in the Tenderloin. So what came about after that was, and we came up with an idea uh, with the Tenderloin Pride in the Park uh, 2015. And what we're basically doing is starting a planning committee. We thought about it last year, but we didn't really start the meetings until this year. So we were hoping for a June date, but since Pride Month is so, so busy, uh, we may end up pushing it back to July or even August, but I'm saying that myself because uh, I'm not the only one that's part of this uh, event, uh, but I'm going to bring up a motion that we push it so we can have a little bit more time to do all the paperwork, and we've been doing uh, a lot of community outreach, and um, there's a bunch of people that are involved, uh, like me, uh, Felicia, uh, yes, and Michael, Michael, and introduce yourself, I'm, Michael, I'm please. I introduce myself before, Michael Thomas Angelo. Great. All right, he's one of the committee uh, members, um, also, and Michael Nolte. Um, if I can just give you some of this here. Um, also, it's just about making sure that the LGBT history is preserved. Um, we're planning on focusing it really on the history. It's no beer or wine or anything like that. Um, but um, just to remember I think the historical nature of the neighborhood, which was traditionally in the 60s, is part of the day. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm videotaping this and turn it back. Yeah. So, yep. Okay. I'm sorry. No, okay. It makes it easier, okay? okay. I didn't okay. mean to interrupt you, I was just interjecting. Well, but that's all right. Yeah, we, we just, this is a neighborhood with 
originally, well, not originally, but I guess in the 60s, it was just uh, known as a uh, very gay, cruisy, you know, area. That, you know, just, uh, there's very deep a gay presence in the area that's kind of decimated over the years. And uh, it's just filtered out. So basically, we want to commemorate the, make sure that history stays alive.